Hey everyone, Mark Price here, devslopes.com, and we are going to continue our discussion on Node.js, and I'm going to show you a few basics of Node and what it can do. So if you want to open up your terminal or shell, so you can, uh, on the Mac, you can command uh, space and type in terminal, and uh, there we go, it pops up here, and make this a little bit bigger for you here. And so to run Node, what does that mean, run Node? Well, to enter an interactive Node shell that can interpret JavaScript, simply type in the word Node. And that little carrot there means that you are now in the interactive shell and you can actually write JavaScript. So, for instance, let me make this even bigger here. I can say var sum num equals 15. Okay, press enter. Then I can do sum num plus 10. And it does the calculation. So, this is an interactive JavaScript shell. It's okay if you want to play around with a few things or get familiar with no, it's not very useful. You don't do a whole lot with it, but it's there to use. So I'm going to control C to quit and control C to quit again. What's more common is to use node to interpret JavaScript files. So let's go ahead and make a folder here, make directory. This is these are Mac commands again, uh, make directory and we're going to call this test CD into test. What I'm going to do is create a file here, I'm going to say test.js. And what I'm going to do is use Vim, the built in uh, text editor on the terminal here, just to write some JavaScript. You can open this with any text program. All I've done is I've created a JavaScript file. You can create your any, any type of program that you use for text editing, you can create a JavaScript file. And I'm just going to Vim into it here and uh, just write some JavaScript in it. Press I to insert. And what I'm going to do is just say var a uh, new num equals 30. I want to say is var is a new new num equals 20. And then we're going to say console.log a new num plus a new new num. Okay, press escape a few times, shift and colon, and then X to quit and save. Okay, so there's my file file ls, it is clearly there. What I'm going to do now is with node, I'm going to actually run that file. What it's going to do is it's going to run the JavaScript interpreter and run this code file here. So let's give it a shot. I'm going to say node. Let's make it bigger and pull it up here. Say node, and then we're going to say test.js. Let's run test.js. So you say node first and then the file that you want to run. So test.js, and it prints 50. So it worked. The, the JavaScript console.log that we printed worked. So if you ever want to test a JavaScript file that you've written locally on your machine, now you don't have to go to JS Fiddle. You don't have to go to your browser. You can do it right here from your computer using node, which is very, very powerful, OK? So that's the basics of how to use Node and interact with it. And uh, one more thing I wanted to show you is something called NPM. I'm going to Command K to clear my terminal here. So let's just go on to the browser here and take a look here. Let's go to NPM, OK? And NPM is a Node Package Manager. And this is where Node really shines, OK? So the Node Package Manager allows you to install packages written in, in JavaScript that you can use with Node which is very powerful. Now, maybe you're thinking, well, how does that help me on a website on my front end? Well, these packages, yes, they are for Node and most of them uh, are for working with Node on a back end or on your computer. However, many, many of these packages also support front end uh, browsers. Now you can't use Node directly with a front end browser. So we have to use a package uh, called Browserify, which will allow us to use node type packages for our front. And we're going to talk about that because that's what Facebook recommends. But node package manager is amazing. Anything you can think about is probably here. Like if I wanted some type of encryption package, I didn't want to write my own AES encryption. Let's just type in AES and see what we find. A JavaScript component for advanced encryption standards. So sure enough, there's packages right here for us to use. They're made publicly available, all open source, very cool stuff. Node package manager is one of the largest communities of people and packages for coding, especially with JavaScript. So very cool stuff. And so if I want to use it, I don't really have to do anything because it comes with Node.js pre-installed. So if I pull this down here, and by the way, you can search any, any type of package you want. So have fun with it. And, and there's some really cool stuff. So I'm in my folder here, right? In my test folder. Let's say I want to install a package which will allow the user to, uh, well, the user being the person writing the JavaScript, I'll be able to write a program that will give me a prompt and someone can answer it on a uh, on the terminal, which is really cool. So 
let's say npm, that's how you access the node package manager, and we're going to say npm install, and we are going to install something called readline-sync. Okay, this is an npm package. Okay, so what it's going to do is it's going to hit the server, and it's going to download it, and there it is right there. Okay, now, if this didn't work for you, or you're having issues, or when you're typing in npm or node, it says command not found, I suggest you go onto Google and just copy and paste the exact errors. There's a bajillion solutions out there for you. Maybe it's not in your path on your system. Uh, this course is not about setting up node that in depth. Uh, there's a bajillion answers again on the internet. Just copy and paste the exact error you're getting, and I'm sure you will find it within two minutes. So very cool stuff. Relaying sync is now installed. Now what I can do is I can actually vim back into test.js here. Okay, insert, and I can actually say var, we're just gonna call it rs for read line sync equals require, and I'm gonna say read line sync. Okay, so what we're doing here is using the require keyword. Require is when we wanna import and use a node package or an external module for node. And in this case, read line sync, that's a string. It has to be typed exactly the same way as the name of the package that was downloaded is. So there we go, we've got read line sync in our program here. And now to use it, what we can do is I can go over here. By the way, I'm not a Vim expert, so if you're, if you're like, why aren't you using hotkeys? It's because I don't know them and I don't ever use Vim except for short examples like this. So console.log, so what we wanna do is we wanna ask the user a question. So we can say var name equals rs.question. Okay, and then we can say, what is your name? Okay, and then what we can do is that we can say console.log your name is, actually, let's just, there you go, do a space plus, and we're going to say name. So some simple JavaScript, what's going to happen is it's going to prompt the user for a, what is your name? And then the user is going to enter it in, and then it's going to save it in that variable name, and then we're going to print it out like you see there with the console.log and the magic is happening in the readline sync package which is why we're doing rs.question which is one of the functions of the readline sync package so escape a few times shift and colon x to save it let's see if it works so i'm going to say node test.js says what is your name so i can just say mark your name is mark there you go so we know that the package is working very cool Node Package Manager, right? You can do all kinds of things with this. And we are going to be using this for our React development. We're going to be using it a lot. And it makes our lives so much easier. It's better to do the best that you can to interpret or compile things before programs are running. So just so you know, React does have scripts that you can put directly into your web page that you can either link to or download from a CDN. And it will interpret and render your JSX code, your, your React code on the fly, but that's heavyweight stuff and you never wanna be doing that kind of stuff on a website. Anything you can do beforehand is much better, which is why we're gonna be using Node. One more thing I wanted to show you is what an error looks like. So I'm gonna say vim test.js and let's just, uh, let's just do something silly. We're gonna say vatter, okay? And then say node test.js. Syntax error, unidentified unexpected identifier, and that even shows you where the error is. So that's one quick way to find errors and problems. As I was teaching a lot of students Node in the past, they would run into problems and they couldn't figure it out. I'm like, just run it in Node. Just, it'll tell you the exact line of code. It can't get much easier than that. So use Node to your advantage. Very cool stuff. Use Node Package Manager. That's really the basics of Node. There's one more thing I'm gonna show you in a different video, and that's about how to import your own script files into Node. But that's it for right now. So Mark Price here, devslopes.com. Let's move forward.